Hey, what's up? I'm Leonard and this is Filmmaker Survival. I've had a lot of requests to do a video on focus pulling for first ACs. My big plan is to do a series of videos for first AC training that would cover everything from, from prepping into shooting and, and even wrapping up. Because I've gotten a lot of requests to do a focus pulling video, I've decided to do this video. Um, and so I've been shooting this video over the last week when I've had some free time. So it's not the most polished video that I've done, but um, there's some really good information in this video for those of you who are, who are trying to get better at focus pulling. Take notes and watch this and, and you can practice some of the stuff the next time you're on set and you're doing some, some focus pulling. Before we get into it, I, I just wanna say, if, if you are having trouble, if you're starting out and you are having trouble keeping things in focus, like following someone or a subject or whatever, or if the camera's moving and you're having trouble keeping whatever you're pushing in on in focus or pulling out of, don't be afraid to ask your DP for a deeper stop. Now, what, what does that mean? A deeper stop meaning like a higher T stop or a higher F stop. Do not be afraid to ask your DP. Even just closing down one stop will help tremendously. Um, and so don't be afraid to ask a DP for it. You know, I, I know personally, I don't like to do it because it, it kind of hurts my pride a little bit because I like to think I can do the toughest focus pulls but sometimes they're just so difficult because you might be wide open and you're gonna be like super close or like super far away coming into like a, an extreme close up. So sometimes you, you just have to get that extra stop. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to get the shot. And so instead of wasting everyone's time trying to get it when you're that really hard pull and you're just not getting it, just ask for a deeper stop and it, it will help you out and it'll save everyone a lot of time. So when you get a monitor, whether it's a TV Logic or a small HD, Personally, I prefer TV Logics, but a lot of people use small HDs. Is you want to go into the settings, and it'll be different spot for different monitors. But you want to find your focus assist settings that have to do with sharpness or peaking boost. And what I like to do is, you know, I have mine set. My peaking boost is a little low, or my sharpness. Sorry, my sharpness is a little low. Here, let me change the focus to the to me in the back here. You can see my hair as I go up the sharpness, it makes it really sharp. That's well, that's kind of too much because you need to, to differentiate certain areas. So you don't want to go too high. So I think I had mine around eight or so. So we'll leave it at eight. Then also this one has, has a peaking boost, which kind of does another kind of sharpness. I couldn't tell you exactly how it works, but it's pretty good for helping find focus. And so, Again, you don't want to turn it all the way up because you, you need to be able to, to tell the different parts of the, of the image, but you need to kind of find your sweet spot. So like this is kind of an example of how I like to have it. Now it's not, because it's not too much, but it's enough that you can see. So you can see on the text here and on the, on the front of the lens, it kind of pops right when it comes in focus. It gets a little bit brighter, so it kind of pops a little bit. Same here with the Instax. See, it kind of pops. I don't, I don't know if you can see it on, on the video, but it, it definitely will stick out once you hit that sharpness of that certain part of the image. So if we go, go deep here, see that you can see that lens, it kind of pops once it gets into focus. That's kind of one of the first things that you can do to help with your focus. But then also in other focus assist areas, there are here, I actually have a hot button set up for it where I have, you can do mono and then it has the red highlight. So see the highlighting stuff that's in focus red. All right, so then, and then as I go deep, you can see all the, the different areas as it changes as I roll through the different areas of that camera. Now the, that lens in the front of the camera is in, in focus and then as I slowly roll back, the rest of the camera becomes in focus. And then if I go deep, so here, the, this camera is in focus. My, the one I'm shooting on right now is in focus, but my hair is a little bit soft, but you have to be careful thing about, about using the focus assist is not to have the sensitivity turned up too high. Here on the, you can also do color with, with the peaking, with the color peaking as well. So you don't have to look at a black and white image. So you can look at color. And you can, in most of these monitors, you can change the color. Yeah, here we go. So I have this specific focus assist Earlier it was sharpness and peaking boost, so it's technically not a focus assist, but then if you come down here and actually go, you will find focus assist. And so I have color on, 
and my hotkey will, so I have to turn it on first and then I can roll through it in my preset button. But here you can change the color. See how it's changing, because these, the text is sharp on the monitor. So any kind of text you're gonna see, it's gonna change it to that color. So, so you can see it's going red, blue, green. So I like to use red. Some people like to use bl blue or green. I, I would advise maybe not using blue because blue is a little funky with your eyes, but I would use red or green. Personally, I like the red. Now here, this is what I'm talking about the level. So you don't want to get it too high because as you can see here, it's getting everything because I have the peaking and the sharpness up. It's then detecting those sharp areas because I have the sharpness in the peaking boost so high, it's doing this to the monitor where you're getting all this noise. So then if you turn up the focus assist color too much, it starts to wash out and you can't tell the difference. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that your level is not too high. So then now I can see the different areas in the frame that are actually in focus. So like if I come close here, so see on that on that lens. So now just the front of that camera, this lens is in focus. But if I start doing this and rolling up, see now the more edges in the back that aren't actually in focus seem to be in focus because it's detecting that sharpness. And so you, you want to turn this down. I like to keep it at around 70. And now, you know, you may need, if you're on a longer lens, you may, or a wide lens, you may have to adjust it accordingly. So that you're so it's not too sensitive, or then, or if you need a little more sensitivity, and so there I can cycle through, and I, now it's off. But I still have that sharpness and that peaking boost, so it still gets that pop. This is mostly how I pull focus. I don't use the color too much. I have, as it sound funny, but as I've gotten older, I do start to use the color sometimes because it just helps pop it out and makes it a little bit easier. But you know, you have to be careful. You have to make sure, like I said, that you don't have it turned up too high. So that, because you want it just so that the critical focus area is sharp. You don't want it to fall deep to things that aren't actually in focus. So you just kind of have to play with those settings and adjust them. So if you're ever in a situation where they're doing crazy lights, like, like pink or blue or something like this, it can be pretty difficult to tell what's in focus or what exactly is sharp. So what I do is in moments like these, is I turn my monitor chroma off or I go to mono color. So it's black and white. And then now it's really easy, as you can see, to tell what's in focus and what's not. So th this happens a lot on music videos and stuff or you know whatever, it can happen on any kind of job. But if they're doing some washed out color, that's all one color like this crazy color, this is a trick to help you see what you're uh, getting in focus because it messes with your eyes and it kind of messes with the monitors too like because it just kind of everything bleeds together so it can be difficult to tell what's in focus so if you just put in the black and white and then all of a sudden now you can see where your peaking is and it's easier on your eyes and you can keep your subject in focus so the number one mistake i see new first acs make is that they think just because someone's sitting here and they're in focus, they can take their hands off the wheel and it'll be fine. But when actors are talking and stuff, they're naturally moving in and out. Or if you're doing an interview, people move around a lot. So, you know, just kind of start leaning forward, you know. And so yeah, even if she, say if she was talking to someone, she's just leaning in and out and keep doing it. Yeah, so like, it's a little extreme right here, but you know, you have to be riding the wheel constantly because you never know when someone's gonna lean forward or they're gonna lean back. And so just imagine she's just having a conversation with someone, she's naturally gonna be moving forward and back. And so you kind of, you have to ride the wheel. You can't just set the focus wheel and think they're gonna stay in because people move around. And especially when your depth of field is very shallow, like right now I'm at a two on a 50 mil full frame and I'm only, I'm probably less than three feet away. So you have to ride that wheel. See, she's just moving around. And then just like adjust your hair and just kind of, yeah, like she's moving, you know. Yeah, so you just have to ride the wheel. You can't ever just take your hand off. Okay, so, so I'm here and I've got this shot set up for you. So I have this Instax, Instant Camera in the front, 
Got a little Leica in the middle. And we've got this bear in the back with the medium format. So, now I don't have any marks on this ring, as you can see. And that Instax camera is almost at minimum. This is minimum and then there it's right there. So it's a little bit short of minimum. And so I wanna talk about muscle memory and how that can help you when you're pulling focus and if you're doing a rack from a one mark to like a two mark. So let's say the bear is our number one mark. All right, and this is, I'm not gonna mark it or anything. I'm not even gonna pay attention to the, to the feet markers. So let's say, so that's our one, and then let's say the insects camera is our two, right? So when you're pulling focus, you never want to do what I'm doing right now. You never want to take your fingers off the wheel. You want to always be on the wheel. So how do we do this big rack? So I'm gonna find my one here, all right, and then let's go two, so it's pretty big. So that's, I'm almost, my hand is almost coming off the wheel. And sometimes you have to like do things like this and just kind of keep going. But what you can do is I'm going to find my two first because that's going to be my end mark. So here's, there's number two. So now I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to find a spot on the wheel and I'm going to try and remember this, get this in my muscle memory where my hand is on the wheel. And so now I'm going to go to, without taking my hand off the wheel, I'm gonna move the wheel all the way to one. So it's pretty awkward position. But, so now I'm on one and then I can just bring it back, snap it to two. So here we go, so one and then all the way to two. So one, it's a pretty awkward position and then two. All right, so one, two. And this is, I'm just looking at the monitor and I'm using my muscle memory by remembering the position of my hand as I'm doing this rack. So one, two, one, two. And when you get it down, you can even go from one to the other. Boom, two to one, and then one, two, I moved my thumb, here we go. One, two, there's two, and then there's one, and then back to two. So if, once you get that muscle memory down, it becomes pretty easy to do. And then you can just kind of adjust the speed if they're like, oh, you know, slow it down a little bit or speed it up, you can kind of do that. All right, so I've got that muscle memory. And so, so to kind of help do this so you're not learning as the shot is happening, is while everybody's setting up and if they've got the marks like that are set, you can kind of practice it. So just find your one and then snap to your two and then just kind of keep doing that and remember your hand placement. And if you need to correct it, you can correct it. See there, I can just snap right to it. Oh, that was a little bit short. But you know, you just get that muscle memory down. See there, I did that one. You can just snap it right to it. Boom, boom. So that's a really good tool to use when you're trying to do a rack, is get the muscle memory. And you can even do it for short moves. So let's let's do not such a crazy rack to close. So let's do this camera in the middle ground. All right. So that's let's check out my hand position. And, and I usually try to do it with my thumb. I try to remember where my thumb is. So there's there's one and two. So this is a little rack. So one, two, one, two. A little far. All right. So there's. My one, there's my two. There's my one, there's my two. So it's, you just kind of remember, get that muscle memory down, and then you can do it really quick. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. So that's a good way to use your muscle memory on a rack. Okay, so now let's do something with some actual marks. So we're gonna actually use a Statler, if you haven't seen what you need to get in your AC kit, watch that video. You need some kind of small fine point dry erase marker. And we use Statlers a lot. These are great for marking your rings. So let's do a little bit more of a complicated rack. So let's do, let's do the Bears R1 again. So that's at eight feet, but I'm still, I'm gonna mark it. And what I might do is I'm gonna put a one 
All right, and then let's do our two as the instax. So let's mark that. I'm gonna put a little two. I'm gonna write a little two on there so I know that's two. And then we'll come up to three. So that's three. All right, so we're gonna go one all the way to two and then back to three. So what I'm doing is while I'm doing this, with, with when I'm doing marks, I'm not watching the monitor as much, but it is good to have your handset close to the monitor in, in the same eye line so that you can still check your focus quickly. So here's one on the bear, and I'm gonna come back to two, and, and then three. So like I said, you do wanna have the monitor where you can see it and your focus wheel, but a lot of times you're gonna be looking at your marks the whole time. So, you know, they call action, and you're like, okay, one, and then you're like, okay, I gotta go to two, and boom, you're at two, and then some other action happens, and you're, bam, you gotta go to three. So you're gonna, if it's something quick like that, so if it's like real quick, you're like one, two, three, that was a little slow, you're gonna be watching your mark the whole time. All right, so let's, let's do it again, let's see what I'm talking about. So here we go, we're gonna go one, I'm gonna go all the way to two, and I'm gonna come back to three, boom. So one, two, three and I'm using that muscle memory especially with number from going from one to two you have to use that muscle memory to get there right so I've got the one and I've got my two boom and then I'm gonna come back to three so one two three all right and I'm watching my marks this whole time so I'm watching the wheel so we're gonna go one two I overshot a little bit and then Al and I overshot three as well. So, so then that's, we just gotta do another take. You know, if you mess up, just let them know you gotta do another one. So here, let's do, let's do one more. So one, go back to two, and we'll go to three. That was better. So we'll start at one, and we'll go to two. I was a little slow getting to two. So we'll try again. One, two, three. And now the speed is gonna determine what is happening in the shot and what, you know, the director wants. So. You know, you can go to one, you might have to, it might be a slow rack, right? So let's start over. So it might be a slow rack. So you might go one, and you might slowly go to two, and you'll come back to three. So, you know, it all depends on, on the speed that they want. You know, maybe they want a quick, you know, one to two, and then it's like a slow to three. It all depends on what the shot is. But that's how you're gonna use your marks. You're gonna be looking mostly at your marks and using that muscle memory that we talked about to help you land each mark during the, during the take. When you have a subject that walks towards the camera, when the subject is farther away, you're gonna move the wheel slowly, and then as they get closer, you're gonna have to speed up to catch up. So here, I haven't practiced this or marked this or anything, but she has a mark close to the camera, so we're just gonna try and just do it right away. And I have no idea what speed she's gonna go or anything, so go ahead and just walk to your mark. See if I can keep her in. Oh, I lost her there, and then uh, I'm speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Oh, see, I went too close. But there, so, and then go ahead and go back. So as she goes back, you can turn around and go back. Uh, you have to start out fast, and then you kind of have to slow down. These lenses are a little tough, because these are the my Leicas, and they're, so they're not rehoused like cinema glass. So the throw distance is very short, so that means you know, your focus moves are gonna be pretty small, especially when it's far away. So it's gonna be very tiny, but as she gets closer, it'll be a bigger move, you have to move more. And you can see by the marks that there's more distance in between the marks as you get closer. I right, go ahead and walk. So I was a little late, but here, let me get this mark here. So she, so she ends right at like three feet. So I'm gonna remember like that muscle memory I talked about, I'm gonna keep my hand here and then go ahead and walk back. And then without moving my hand off the wheel, I'm gonna rotate it to her one. Okay, so here's her one. All right, now walk forward again. Let's see if I can get this. There, it's better, I was still a little late, but you get the idea is that as the subject gets closer, you have to pull faster. 
you can go back again. And then now as she walks away, I'm starting faster and then I'm catching up and then going slow. So it's very tough and I'm wide open. Another thing is I'm at a two on this. So like I'm gonna adjust the stop. Okay, so now I've adjusted the stop to a four. So it's a little darker in here because I don't have a lot of light, but this should make the depth of field deeper. So I should be able to have her in there long, uh, much easier. All right, let's do it one more time. Okay, go ahead. Oh, there, see I held her the whole time there because we were at a four. So that's something that, you know, when you're pulling focus, obviously the deeper the stop, the wider the depth of field, so the easier the, the focus pull will be. So it's just gonna be really tough when you're wide open. So when your camera is set up, whether it's one of these three, a dolly, steady cam, or gimbal, and they're gonna, there's gonna be some kind of move in and out on your subject. So you wanna make sure that you put your monitor somewhere that you can see the camera and your actor, or whatever is gonna be your shooting that's gonna be moving as well. Because you want to be able to see when that camera or that actor is moving. So you wanna make sure that you can peek around your monitor, whether it's in your peripheral vision or whatever, you need to see that the camera is moving or that your talent is moving because that way you know when you need to start adjusting your focus. Now there are gonna be times where you just can't, you might be in a tight location and you might just have to rely just on your monitor. But in an ideal situation, definitely try to follow this diagram and set yourself up where you could see when that camera is going to move. Even sometimes when I'm on a set, like if we're on a stage or something and, and the dolly is there and I've set myself up so that I can see it moving, sometimes like someone will stand in front of me and I won't be able to see the dolly, you know, because people are standing around set off camera. Maybe it's the first AD or a PA or something or, you know, another camera person or whatever. You know, I, I've had to tell first ADs to kind of scoot over so that I can still see the dolly. And they understand that you need to see that dolly move so you know when exactly to start your focus pull. And it's, it's gonna be better than just relying on the monitor. So you always wanna be able to see when the camera's moving. So I know I'm repeating myself a lot. So just put yourself in a position where you can see that dolly, that steady cam, or that gimbal start to move and stop the move. So here's some tips and tricks that I use when I'm on set when I need to get marks. Um, and one of them is, is starting out, if they're lighting the shot with a stand-in, is that while the stand-in is sitting there and the camera is in its final position, is you can get your marks that way. And also, you know, they when they do rehearsals with the stand-in, you know, if there's a camera move or the talent is going to be moving around in the set to towards camera or away from camera, what you can do is while they're doing that with the stand-in is get your marks that way. Now they may not be the exact marks when the talent comes in because things do slightly change and it gives you a good idea of what that focus pull is going to be like before you actually shoot it with the talent. Another thing is is if it you know if they're doing it with the talent, get your marks while they're rehearsing. You know, if you're doing a dolly move or a steady cam move or a gimbal move, that operator is going to be practicing that move. So just be at your monitor and just start practicing with them and then get get your marks as you're going along because you the two of you need to be on the same page and so you gotta make sure that you're both ready for that shot because they're practicing the move you also need to be practicing the focus pull so that's another way that you can get your marks while they're rehearsing the shot with the actual talent so sometimes you know maybe there isn't a stand-in or maybe they don't do a rehearsal and maybe you need like a quick mark but no one's been there for you to get a mark and so what you can do is if the talent is on set and just before you're about to roll the camera you can just politely ask the talent to you know hey do you mind standing on your mark because as the first AC you're one of the few people on set that can actually talk to the talent because it's important because you will need to get marks and sometimes you have to um, you know, have them be like uh, to move their mark. Maybe you need them to move their mark over a little bit. And so you're allowed to talk to the talent. And so just ask them politely, be like, hey, do you mind standing on your mark? I just need to get a mark real quick. And they'll happily do it. I don't think I've ever had an issue with 
talking to talent and having them stand on the mark for me. Or if there's some dead time and you need to get a mark, just have your second AC go stand on their tape mark, on the town's tape mark, and then you can get your mark that way. Or maybe if like you're rushing and, and for whatever reason you weren't ever to get a mark where they were standing or sitting or where they're starting or their number two was, what you can do is if they're like, all right, let's roll camera, you can have your second AC go put the slate over their mark. So that way you can get focus on the slate at their mark. And then that way, and then you can mark it on your wheel that way. So that's another trick that you can use if you haven't had time or been able to get a mark is either, like I said, have your second AC stand on that mark or have to put the slate over the mark so you can get focus. And then unfortunately, a lot of times, especially if you're doing some like crazy handheld stuff, you're not gonna be able to get marks um, because it's not really gonna do too much for you, especially if it's like a crazy action scene or if it's like um, a performance for a music video or a dance number or something like that. And the, the operator's just going in and out and everywhere or whatever, like you just have, you just kind of have to go with it. You know, you're not gonna be able to get marks. And that's just something that's gonna take more practice. The more that you do stuff like that, the better you'll get at it. So if you watch this far, I know there's a lot of different subjects to cover when it comes to focus pulling, and I, I just can't get to them all in this video because I just don't have access to a lot of the equipment to do that. And that's why I wanna make that video series for you guys. So thank you so much for watching this video and look forward to me launching a Kickstarter to get that that full first AC training series going. And if you haven't subscribed, um, please hit that subscribe button for me. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any focus pulling techniques or tricks that you like to use. Thanks again. See you in the next one. Going off walkie.